Is today the last day <laughs> of all the days? Is it today? Good evening, everybody. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I think he's very eager to end today. I'll go live in the meantime. I can invoke. Aapko namaste everybody. So uh, as we have others still joining us today, let's uh, start off with our uh, prayer for today. Yeah? Not at all. Yes, Saparna. <laughs> Last day. <laughs> Last day. All right. So let's close our eyes, connect onto our palate, inhale and exhale, relax. I know what my happy event is going to be for the next <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> Close your eyes. Let's focus on what we go we'll, we're all here to, together to do. Let's inhale and exhale, relax the body. To the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother. To our beloved and respected teacher, Grandmaster Chua Kok Sui, Lord Maha Guruji Nele. To Buddha Kwanian, Buddha Sakyamuni, to the Lord Christ, to all the great beings, teachers, and masters of theosophy, the great beings of knowledge, light, and power, to the angels and beings of communication, the internet connection on our respective Wi Fi's, to our soul and divine self, we humbly ask for your great, great blessings, for your divine guidance, for your light, for your love, for your mercy, for your tremendous patience with each one of us. We ask you to help us to be open in our minds and our thoughts to be super receptive to all the teachings and to help us have a deeper and clearer understanding of these priceless teachings. Help us to assimilate this knowledge and to, be, to use this to become better instruments to do your work here on earth. We humbly offer ourselves as instruments to do your work with your blessings, with the blessings of God and the teachers. So be it, so be it, so be it, so it is. Namaste, everyone. <coughs> Welcome to our session. We are at the conclusion. We started off with it uh, last uh, week, but uh, we, we will try and see what we can do with the earlier recordings that some of you haven't had uh, the luxury to see. We, we're still trying to figure out Can't which put would on be Google the Drive because, I mean, it's 41 recordings, so to download it first off Vimeo and I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so so uh, what you could do is you can, uh, like I said last time, or rather we said last time, we don't have a problem if you want to download it for your personal things, yeah? For your personal understanding and study, not to kind of show to everyone. I don't want you and other people to get into trouble. Don't take yes. my references out of context because my references can be very... Uh, what's the word? Correct. How do you download? I'm not too, too sure, Rafka. Uh, you have sneaky ways of downloading. Come on, you have to think about it. Okay, so I'm not too sure. Maybe you can ask some of your friends. They might, I have no idea. There's a tool called... Okay, anyway, it's live. Okay, okay so let's go on. Yes, so we're here at the conclusion. Uh, this is where we will uh, continue from. The chapter is called Conclusion. Yeah, the chapter is called Conclusion. So we are in the second part of the conclusion. We started off last week. Uh, so basically, we're trying to see... Uh, one of the things that they mentioned is to try and work on getting more research done, right? In the field uh, of both energy, the energy body, the energy working, and the correlation between the physical body, the energy body, the astral body, and the mental body. So it's, that is basically what the chapter is all about, saying that we can try and use some of the techniques already mentioned here, whether it's the, uh, it's the different types of uh, healing mechanisms, whether it's hypnotism, mesmerism, whether it's a point of uh, experiments done by uh, Mr. Crawford or the Baron or uh, the one by Kilner, all the things that have, meant, that, that have been mentioned, they say, can we work on it to, to kind of use maybe similar things? And they're hoping that in the future, uh, maybe not yet, we are still 100 years hence, we are not really that advanced, but they're hoping that medicine would start using it and it becomes very common. Uh, and also they talk about the healing mechanism, that energy healing will be uh, the in thing. And uh, just like we treat the physical body today as being so important with health, they say that uh, by the time energy healing comes into play, 
people will start to recognize that the energy body is as important and then a lot more focus we'll go on will to be... the end of this page the healing part just take the whole thing i'm not i'm not going to read i'm just telling them what it's oh, about okay. <laughs> right and so it's going to tell you that this uh, modality of healing will make the energy body very very important in due course right so hopefully we are, that's where we are all heading and just like we give importance to uh, various things with uh, with with basically the physical uh, quality, uh, the product, you know, what goes in. The, the next thing is with, with anything that you want, whether it's healthy food, whether it's diet food, you want to also look at the prana quality, right? So, so that's basically where the energy is uh, going to come into, uh, into prominence in, in this chapter and where we, they are asking us to go, yeah? So let's go. So a number of methods of conducting such research is open for us. So this is basically what they're talking about, like I mentioned earlier. First, we have methods of direct clairvoyance. This is the one that makes it easiest to see the so-called energy body, uh, the etheric double, the bioplasmic body. However, not everybody has this capability. But if that uh, ability is there, and remember, they also say there's gradations of clairvoyance. And I think Amit has mentioned this several times with reference to the people that he's met, to, to the kind of clairvoyance that one has. Uh, for me, it's literally like a baby uh, who starts to see, who starts to understand as it starts to see, as it starts to grasp information, it can go deeper and deeper. And today, you and I can understand many more things uh, on a deeper level, including the physical body and today also the energy body. Okay, so let's go on. So there are uh, direct clairvoyance observation at different levels. Uh, it being probable in the view of the rapid development of certain sections of the human race. So they say that certain uh, parts of the uh, human race would probably have this faculty. But remember, they also mentioned that this faculty can be um, stimulated by uh, Dr. Kilner's, remember that screen and other things that he had? So we're going to talk about that. So basically, they're saying that uh, the larger number of persons will find themselves in the not so distant future in possession of this ethnic faculty, right? Now, we are about, what, 50 of us here. I'm not sure how many of us are actually clairvoyant. So maybe it's still not that future. Hopefully, that future is still coming uh, closer at hand than further away. In addition to the etheric faculty, so this is one. So one is uh, definitely using clairvoyance faculty to kind of counter and understand what, what is happening with the energy body. The second one is actually the different means given to us by the different people who've done all the experiments, right? So they start off um, un uh, normally unfolded in the ordinary course of evolution. So we start off with Dr. Kilner's, where he basically uses the screens. Remember the screens that he used? So they're saying you could use that such, can, uh, such things can be employed <clears throat> and possibly by other physical means yet to be <clears throat> a device or discovered. So at that point, it was only the screen. But we know, of course, today we have uh, beyond that, beyond the screens that he used, it's come to a different level of photography as well. So both, uh, they also say maybe we can also use mesmerism and hypnotism. Yes. As ad with adequate safeguards <clears throat> be employed to make available latent etheric faculties. So for those who cannot see, uh, for those who cannot really sense this, they're saying maybe you could use this, but of course, with a lot of guidance and, and taking, safe, uh, taking proper measures so that it got, doesn't cause a problem. The use of photography may in future become very extensive and important, right? We're talking about something like trillium photography and other forms. And then they talk about the salts used in the photographic plate being sensitive to maybe wavelengths and a degree of light beyond the reach of the normal light. So anything that we cannot see with our normal physical vision, right? So they're basically trying to tell us we can come up with new apparatus that would help us see through, yes, with our usual naked eye. Or if you have the etheric faculty that's actually opened up, that is clear ones, you could use that. So you could use both these factors to try and see further and help to deduce certain conclusions. A further method of research using ultraviolet light, right? So they're talking about the screen, they're talking about photograph, using mesmerism and hypnotism to open up that, and then ultraviolet light. A laboratory for this purpose uh, has already been created at that time by the Theosophical Society. Yes, uh, this was open at Leeds in that particular uh, town. That's an, interesting because Leeds is quite uh, a well-known organization, right? And if they started off then, wonder what they're still doing with this uh, laboratory back 
from them. So moving on, the methods employed by uh, Crawford. Who Leeds is a city in England. What are you oh, Leeds is a city. Yeah. No, what is that other you thing? You play football. You don't know for Leeds and. <laughs> oh no no! I'm thinking of something else. <laughs> Okay, in my head, I, I think I need to try and remember what it is that I'm associating Leeds with. Okay, so uh, in that particular town in 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 uh, United Kingdom. United. Yeah, uh, so that's where they started off. So remember, a lot of this has been uh, worked by probably a lot of the influential people who were impressed by the information, and then they actually kind of give out uh, funds to to continue with this. I'm sure the Baron did something like that in Germany as well. Okay, let's go on. So then they talk about uh, Crawford, who've been talking about in the last class. So they said, maybe we can also pursue uh, with other workers and addition <clears throat> thus be made, thus be made to the exceedingly valuable results obtained by uh, the investigations that he's gone into, right? However, they talk about the Baron's uh, experiments, right? They say maybe with him, it might be a little difficult to kind of pursue that because, uh, uh, okay, let me just read it, then you'll understand. So they're saying that as to the desirability of utilizing the seance room for obtaining such materialize, materialization phenomena <clears throat> as those obtained, uh, for example, by the Baron, uh, there is likely to be uh, <clears throat> divergence of opinion. So it's, it's not conclusive yet. Remember, there were many things that were said that were not yet concluded properly in, that, in his research. So that could be uh, one aspect. The second aspect is, it is fairly generally admitted that the phenomena of this nature may easily be uh, highly injurious, remember, to the medium. Losing weight and you know, other things can happen to their, uh, to their nerve cells and the energy coming out of them. So both physically and in other ways. However, they say, if, uh, if, this, if the medium does sacrifice themselves, knowing that these are the disadvantages of the experiments uh, for the sake of science, then the scientific experiment can go through. But because of the second factor, they're saying maybe it may not be something that people would be very interested. Uh, and so it says, uh, it seems fairly certain, however, that the highest spiritual teachers of the present day do not look with favor on the seance room. So the people a hundred years ago uh, from the various religions, the other spiritual teachers did not take well to the seance room, right? So from the movie that uh, we were talking about earlier, uh, what was it called? Kardec. Kardec, yes. You will see that the definitely the Christian, uh, the church was definitely against all the things that he was trying to do. Uh, though he did try to publish, he did publish uh, all his, his, his findings in a scientific manner. So they say, yet it may be argued that in other ages, right, way before, if you've, uh, even with all the series that you watch today, you'll realize that it was very common to have Vestal Virgins, Soothsayers, Prophets, and other mediums uh, receive the sanction and approval from the highest authorities, right? So in many- Jumping into the volcano kinds, right? Jumping into the volcano types. Okay, I'm not too sure. But you'll notice that any decision that has to be made by the king or the king, uh, sorry, the queen or the emperor, they normally ask for these people to come in, right? The soothsayer comes in, you have the person who can uh, see through, right? The soothsayers. Uh, you have uh, you have also the, sorry, the prophets. And then they have these, uh, in some stories that we read about and see in the movies, there are also these virgins who are able to see uh, beyond and, and are actually able to tell them which direction to go forward, with, especially when it comes to war, right? And so in those days, they were considered Scorpion very important. King, right? Scorpion King, right? Uh, but she wasn't a Vestal Virgin. Vestal Virgins are from the Roman times, I think. Yeah, so, so that there are many movies, uh, even that one with the Persian, you know that game you guys used to play? Yeah, Prince of Persia. Prince of Persia. I think even in that. Anyway, so in many of these ancient uh, or very, yeah. very old uh, systems, this always existed. So they were given a lot of importance. Uh, priority was given to their readings, what they saw, and decisions were taken based on that, right? So whether they were called high priests or soothsayers or prophets, it, it was definitely something that they looked at. The present writer, therefore, refrains from offering any dogmatic conclusion on this point. So they were there, the mediums were there, but the preference today, even today, right now in our society, they are considered more gypsies and, and you know, something that's a little weird. All right, let's move on. 
Oh, Amit, you want to add something? No, I think I spoke about, didn't I speak about uh, the how humanity is evolving, like they're careless with details. So for those who know psychotherapy, I think I spoke about that last time. So we're still a little far away from what he's talking about, even after 100 years. Um, yeah. Uh, method of direct clairvoyant observation and uh, is being probable. It, it, it's still far. People are not, even with their eyes, most people can't see properly. <laughs> Unfortunately, even today, they're careless with details. Oracle, correct. Right? Um, yeah, Oracle. So, you know, they're a little bit careless with details, careless with a few things. You notice that, uh, I think we spoke about this, so we can just skip that. And uh, with regards to the virgins and suits here, so what he's trying to do is just not... Um, uh, he's trying not to cause a conflict, but it's very clear that he's against um, because there are different ways through which uh, investigation into the etheric double can be done. One way is clairvoyance yeah, and uh, using different versions, mechanical clairvoyance where you use the plates and then etheric clairvoyance where you energetic uh, changes. And then what is there, was there one more? Uh, and then uh, light using uh, other ways. And then there's also another way of investigating the etheric double, which is the mediums and the seances, which he, uh, it, it's quite clear, I can assume that he's not for it, but he just don't want to say it out loud because uh, it might be, uh, um, it might hurt the sentiments of people who are traditional in nature, where they used to have these Vestal Vajra and Suthias and, uh, and they believe in prophets and all that. So he's just uh, not saying it uh, on the record. It's a very, uh, very interesting that he talks about himself in the third person. Instead of saying, I therefore refrain, he says the present writer. It's very interesting. It's like Master Cho. Yeah, like Master Cho. So yeah, go ahead. Then healing. All right. So now we come to, those were all the experiments and the various ways in which they're saying, you know, we really need to go into it in depth. Uh, now, the second part is with reference to healing. That's where you and I, especially um, from what I can see, most of us are pranic healers, if not Arhatic yogis. So the mode of healing, the ability to try and bring about a change in someone's physical health and psychological health is something that is super amazing, right? Now, when we did this whole book, we're almost at the end. We realized, my God, if, if Master had given us the anatomy of etheric double, I think none of us would have done the basic class. Imagine trying to understand. Okay, Form the solar. <laughs> and then. Then the prana the that atom. comes. <laughs> yes. And then it divides like this. And then it goes to the various organs. Right. I know we, we've got. Take half an atom for yourself <laughs> and three or half an atom you did to the patient. And then you give certain amount only to this particular uh, chakra or energy center. Right. So if there was that anatomy, I think the class would have been really complex. But he's taken this. But impressive. <laughs> yeah, it would have been impressive. It's impressive even now when we're looking at it. I mean, but there's nothing, there are no techniques given, right? Uh, but beyond that, for me, he's made it so simple that he gives us something that we can relate to. So, though he's talking about the etheric body, though he's talking about etheric healing or energy healing, he only brings it back to the physical body that we know of, right? The physical eyes and even the placement of the chakras is with reference to the physical body that we are so familiar with. And that's what I like about Masucha. He simplified it to such an extent. He makes it easy for us, no matter where you're from, you know, which country, which language you speak, uh, whether you're from rural parts or, you know, provinces or whatever it is. It didn't matter because the simplicity with which he's able to give this to us. Of course, he went through a lot of trials in that. So if you read Masucha's autobiography, not autobiography, it's autobiography of Masucha. It is. The, yeah, it is something like that. Origins uh, of the Origins of Modern Pranic Healing and Arhatic Yoga. You'll notice that, uh, I'm not sure if it's, if it's uh, completely explained there, but he actually wrote the first draft of Ancient Science and Art of Pranic Healing and gave it to one of the persons who, who was with him. And he asked this uh, gentleman to read it. And he says, I have no idea what you've written, right? So even his initial drafts were quite complex because he realized he knew how to heal by then, right? He understood because of all his observations, all the experiments, all the people he worked with, he was able to heal. And he was able to get amazing results. But when he had to put it in paper, when he had to put it in black and white, that's when he realized the struggle was. And so with many, many drafts, in the end, he was able to come up with ancient science and art of pranic healing or the miracles to pranic healing. And once he finished writing the book, he didn't want to look at the book. <laughs> He's like, enough. I just go there and heal. And Master Cho would work and heal after his work, get to this clinic and work for, I think, heal for about three, four hours. 
something like that is what I remember Afterward. Master Danny would talk about. Yeah, he would come and just heal and heal and heal. But uh, for me, I think what's most amazing, like I just mentioned, is the simplicity with which he's given this information to us, even though there's some complex background behind it, right? And so coming to this part, the possibility of utilizing knowledge of etheric phenomena for the purpose of healing would appear to be almost limitless. And we are starting to see that potential. You know, when um, I did pranic healing in 1995, it was very, very different. We just stuck to physical ailments. Patient came, healed, physical, gone. <laughs> right? So for about five years, we just did physical healing. And then there were these people who started to use it with their businesses. They started using it with agriculture. And then you realize the same healing modality could then be used for anything that had energy. Right? People started doing healing for their animals. They started doing healing for oil, literally. So the uh, fuel that you put into your vehicle, diesel or petrol or whatever, they would actually clean it. And they realized the arrangement of the atoms, right, of that started to change. And the person was able to get more miles or kilometers out of the same uh, amount of fuel. Now, honestly, I tried it way, way back. I have never tried it after that. But, you know, people started to use this. And, and for me, I realized, wow, you know, we limited ourselves at that point, at least initially when I started only to healing the physical body. There was nothing else. And of course, pranic psychotherapy, but only via the physical body. There was nothing else that we really worked on. And then they started to apply this on others. And, and, and today, of course, we have a wide variety of things. Yes, including uh, body sculpting, pranic facial, it was something that we never even thought of. At least it didn't cross my mind in those days. Yes, so healing completely took on a, a different... Now, is it limitless? Yes. I remember even at the point uh, when we were doing it at that, that uh, um, time of the mid-90s, there was this uh, doctor who was doing some experiments. And uh, I remember he took tablets, right? And they took the pictures of the tablets. And these were, I'm not sure if this is the same tablets, but there were tablets that were given to little kids from, uh, from a, I think it was a Apollo hospital or one of those hospitals where we had little kids who came in for chemotherapy. And their medicine was actually cleansed and energized. And then they took the photograph of the same medicine, clairvoyantly, right? So, so that's basically using acrylic photography. And they realized there's a huge change in the tablets. And the kids who took that later on, their symptoms of loss of hair, loss of appetite, started to, and even loss of hair, uh, actually reduced. So they did that experiment at that point, and they noticed at that point, when they applied energy on medicine, there was already a change, yes? And so there could be a wide range in which this could be used, uh, including, uh, what, what's the doctor from, uh, one who came for the convention? Hughes? Ah, I forgot his name, anyway. Uh, the guy from the Southern California. Yeah, with the cancer cells. So the effect of pranic uh, Joey Jones. Joey Jones, Dr. sorry. Dr. Joey Jones on, on cancer cells. Uh, what was the difference there? We had uh, a doctor came, who... Came, yeah, he did the same in the convention. South the convention. American, uh, American convention. And American convention. And, and also and, your, the uh, all in... Not, what is it called? World convention. Yes, World Pranic Healers. Pan American and World, both he came. So okay, both. and then there was another person who was a doctor who actually does surgery, right? Bone surgery. Mm -hmm. And he talks about how he opened up the entire leg, which he normally has to for his surgery. And he realized when he had a team of people doing pranic healing on that leg, the amount of blood that would actually ooze and come onto the, they usually keep a towel under the leg of the patient, started to reduce considerably. And he actually showed. We're not explaining it properly. Frankly, we don't understand a lot of it because they use technical terms. It, 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 we didn't. He didn't open up the leg. He used the proper terms, but we're not. No, I'm just talking about surgery. Just giving in you the general sense of surgery so opening it, up the leg. It really helped, and also recovery time. Uh, yeah. The bleeding. So in 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 short, the bleeding was uh, reduced. Uh, yeah, much less than what was normally expected, and the recovery time was also hastened and. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, correct. Yeah. And they actually showed us the towel, you know, the normal patients when they do it and this patient with it, it was a big difference. So my point is basically giving you these uh, very short, brief uh, ex uh, uh, examples is to try to tell you that this energy can really work like they're saying it's limitless. We really haven't tried it probably everywhere. Uh, I know of Master uh, Faith who actually does healing for one of her students who runs a pharmaceutical company. 
And that lady is so impressed by the effect of the, the medication that goes out of her company that she says, you know, it has to be done for all batches of medication that is produced in her pharmaceutical company. Right. So there can be a wide range. I remember there was this one person who says, can you do it for our beauty products? Hmm. Yes. Oh. Um, and uh, of course, at that point, you know, there was a lot of work for me. I still have a lot of work. So I completely blindsided it. And at that point, didn't do anything. But hopefully today we have enough people who are ready to help. Yes, we had, I think we have a thoracic <coughs> surgeon, cancer surgeon, who wanted help because he realized the effects of pranic healing. Uh, here in Bangalore, and he says, "If you can, we can give you a, a room. You can do healing for all our." Yeah, patients. but he had way too many uh, <laughs> uh, patients uh, at that time. Maybe we didn't have enough. Too many people with cancer. So, Sorry. yeah. But uh, yeah, actually, uh, even if you don't use it on the patients, I'm sure the doctors would want pranic healing when you, they're doing the surgeries because many times it's physically and mentally exhausting uh, when you do do surgeries based on the feedback I've received. Uh, after some time, it gets to you. So sometimes, so even if it's not directly, uh, I, I, you know, pr healing can also be used, if not for direct recovery, uh, to assist with recovery, but also to assist with uh, the surgeons and assist with maybe nervousness, maybe with anxiety, maybe with uh, um, energy levels. Uh, give them a boost while they're doing the healing, uh, while they're doing the surgery, because the amount of concentration, depending on the surgery, can go on for hours. And also, uh, it can be used on um, what they call, I forgot what they call them, but there are these borderline patients where, you know, they're not able to handle the uh, surgery. Their body can't handle it. Like, they can be only put under anesthesia for a certain number of hours. More than that, there's a risk. So can we do something energy-wise that would, uh, you know, mitigate or lessen the risk? Of course, there's no way to validate, but, uh, but at least better, something is better than nothing is complementary. So we can make the uh, physical body, energy body strong. So when they're under anesthesia, the body can, you know, withstand this uh, for a longer time. So the surgery can be completed. So there are many, many, many applications, not just direct, but also indirect applications that can be done. Provided there are enough professional healers <laughs> around <laughs> to do them. ACPH, CPH. CPH more for those <laughs> kind of things. Correct. ACPH, not so much, but good stepping stone. Go ahead, go ahead. All right. Yes. <laughs> He's going kalas, yalla kalas. It's okay, Habibis. Let's just wait. Okay, so here goes. So um, many cases of diseases, physical, emotional, and mental, the employment of vital or magnetic healing, uh, which, which could also include the present healings that we know, and also mesmerism and hypnotism, would seem to be in line with the general progress of thought in this direction. Yes, so basically using healing. And we know that right now, like we're talking about, it, it definitely has worked with diseases uh, on the physical, on the emotional, mental level. We already started with that system. In particular, the use of mesmerism to produce uh, anesthesia for surgical or other purposes. Now, remember the, the point where you could actually uh, work with that, right? Now, they're saying this is in case we don't have the following. That is in, in case, that is to, in the place of ether, gas or chloroform, which is not present to do the proper anesthesia, would appear to possess many recommendations. So basically, that could be one way. I don't think anyone's really using it at this point, not that I know of. Yes, but they're saying that could be one thing, to use mesmerism uh, in case there is no gas or chloroform for the uh, process of surgery. It may also be Surmise. surmise that the science of um, osteopathy in conjunction with the study of the four centers, that is the energy centers or chakras, and the flow of vitality of the human body should lead to valuable results, right? And so when we do healing with patients who have any kind of musculoskeletal disorder, if we are able to add this on a regular basis, you can really help them. Whether it's an old person, whether it's a young kid who's broken their bones, whether it's a middle-aged person who's got osteoarthritis or rheumatoid arthritis, we can actually help them with these autoimmune diseases as well. And so it continues. Yeah, it's not autoimmune disease. What autoimmune? Uh, rheumatoid I know, arthritis. I know. I thought you were talking about osteopathy. No, osteopathy no, no, is just like an alternative medicine. Correct. So uh, you notice that with various systems, the respiratory system, the the system of uh, the gastrointestinal, the reproductive. All these systems can be further helped uh, if we are 
we kind of add pranic healing to it or energy healing to it. Yeah. You want to say anything there? Yeah. The question is, why do they use osteopathy? Why do they use muscles and bones? Because in general, as far as I know, you can't do much about the muscles and bones <laughs> if something goes wrong with them, right? You can't take out the bone and put a new one like you can do for organs. Uh, I don't think so. Can you? You can replace the knee and hips. Yeah, now Today. they have plastic. Today yeah. you those have days it, yeah. they don't. But actually, uh, even but if you replace the knee and those kind of things, uh, the technology is becoming fairly amazing as far as I've uh, heard of. Um, they only last a certain amount of time. 10 years so, usually. So if you work with uh, especially musculoskeletal, because those kind of things are, you see, uh, what they're trying to say is if you complement, here they're talking about alternative, but you can't have alternative per se. You have to have modern medicine because they deal with the form aspect, the physical body. And then what we do is we make sure that, uh, you see, if you're doing a surgery, if you're doing any medical procedure, the, to recover the body, you need energy. You need, uh, you need prana. And so if prana is uh, put into the body, uh, the recovery is very, very fast. And also, the rate of deterioration is also, uh, yeah, you, know, uh, you, know, in, you know, it's improved. Like there's very, uh, the, you know, it's reduced. Uh, so those two combined with medical treatment with, um, with um, what is the term? Physiotherapy. My God, the person will become really, really uh, healthy. Um, so that's why uh, they probably mentioned bones and muscles because it's a very common issue as your body goes older, it's wear and tear, right? Most of the time, <laughs> most of the time nowadays it's uh, emotional, <laughs> which is even worse because even if you get the knee replacement, you still got a have muscular problem because you not uh, removed the cause. Correct. So Banumati, um, I remember your case study when you uh, when I did the ACPH with you. Uh, Banumati mentions here how she still works with healing her medication, right? But uh, I think Banumati, for me, what you did with your body was truly amazing. Right. Uh, could you share very quickly your story, please? You can for unmute yourself. Medication? No, for musculoskeletal when she used pranic healing. Yeah. I think your, your self-healing case was truly amazing for me. I still remember it. You did self-healing? Yeah. I've broken my entire bones with the different uh, accidents uh, with uh, um, uh, what do you call pelvis bones, fractured crack, uh, followed by uh, lumbar crack with the paralysis, my left leg, then followed by this uh, cervical, uh, then uh, even now my this hand is a little, this thing, and my femur bone, uh, I mean, come down even now, and the left thing. But all these things in the last 10 years with my personal self-healing of pranic healing, only after basic pranic healing class. Oh. I moved to advance after getting myself cured. <laughs> so I really amazing. I really owe all my gratitude to Grandmaster Chokoksi and all the people in the pranic healing. Yes, Banumati. And I think I, I also remember you saying when you came for the basic class, you actually came with all those things in your body. Yes. Those yes. bolts and screws yes. and you sat I with all of that. Dress. I couldn't do any healing because I had a bandage. I have the gadget. Uh, I was only listening. I could not even feel properly because this hand was bandaged. I was doing like this. I could do nothing. I was only yes. listening. <laughs> no, nothing. Uh, yes. Thank you, Banumati. Thank you for sharing that. I always thought that was an amazing case. Thank you so Thank much. You so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, so since we were talking about bones, I, I suddenly remembered uh, Banumati's case and uh, wanted to, her to share that uh, very quickly with you. Yes, it was a wow even for me. You know, normally when people give me uh, testimonials and they give me self-healing, uh, my comparison now is always with Banumati's. I said, if it's a really miraculous, amazing case, then you put it in there. <laughs> Don't tell me you cut your hand and you healed it. I said, why, why are you wasting a self-healing case on that? Right. Anyway, uh, so that was basically uh, with reference to healing of the body, the physical body. Yeah? Nothing psychological, nothing emotional about it. Purely the physical body having a, a really bad case of injury, which, which was uh, in her case, she was healing and continues to heal. Now, you've got to remember that as we grow older, no matter how healthy we were younger, our body does deteriorate. The muscles, the bones, everything does change. Uh, like, like Amit mentioned, it's, uh, it's the ability 
to absorb and retain that energy to continue to keep the body healthy also changes. And that's why I remember uh, many years ago, maybe two decades ago, when I used to watch this Oprah Winfrey on TV, and she would say, you know, when she was 40, she was able to do exercise at this, you know, like say 45 minutes and maintain her health. She says now that she's in, she's, I think she was already in her 50s or something. And she said, it's not the same amount of time. I need more time to maintain the same thing that I did in my 40s. And for me, I was, you know, very young, still very young. But I used to wonder, what is she talking about? You know, because I was still doing the same thing at that point with uh, the, the body does change physically. And if that energy boost can be given and if we exercise regularly, allowing this old energies to get flushed out, we can maintain a healthier lifestyle. And for me, one of the things that you need to remember is if you can look at your parents, right? Our genes come from them. So if you realize there are already these issues in the family, take care of it now. You can feel the energy. You can change the health of your physical body. If you realize there are certain emotional problems in the family and it's kind of there, that could also be looked at. But definitely your physical genes come from there. Yeah, but diet and, uh, Exercise. and, and uh, uh, work life has changed since our parents' yeah, yeah, time. Huh? <laughs> so we have to factor those in. All right, shall we? Even more reasons for us to take care of that. All right, come on. Uh, where was I? Yeah, it will, um, the remarkable discoveries of Dr. Abrams, yes, will appear to have been accepted at least partially by the medical profession, would seem to be capable of conferring almost incalculable benefits on the disease uh, ridden human race of today. Although it is not, the present writer believes, rigidly proved, yet it would appear to be almost certain that the methods employed in the Abrams uh, system act directly or indirectly on and through the etheric body. Do you remember what he was? No, now, I don't remember what Dr. Abrams actually did, uh, but the point is again, I think something similar to what we were talking about. Right. Uh, that is with reference to the the energy body having its influence on the physical body, which the medical fraternity uh, or the medical professions actually take care of. Now, um, just a reminder again, when we're talking about this, when we're talking about the etheric body, the etheric body is part, yes, of our of our um, of what we call the invisible physical body. But remember, the physical body is also equally important. So it's not that you <clears throat> neglect taking care of the physical body through medication. Whatever medication is given to you by the allopathy, homeopathy, Ayurveda, Siddha doctors, you need to consume that to help the physical body heal itself because it has a direct connection with the physical form. Whereas your energy body works beautifully on the energy body. So let the energy body do its work on the energy centers, the organs or through the energy centers into the organs that it controls and you take the medication as well or allow your patients to continue with their medication. So when that happens, the healing is rapid. It's much faster than it could be. Yes. <clears throat> and the same also for psychological ailments. When doctors give or psychiatrists give your patients medication, there is usually an, a chemical imbalance in the patient's system. And the medication he takes, try to bring about that balance. When that balance is sustained, it's easier for you to then heal that patient rather than without it. Yes. So um, that is very important for me to say at this point. Um, Amit, do you have anything to add? Can I continue? Yeah, continue, continue. Okay. I don't have anything to add. All right. The recent uh, revival of the healing method by the Christian community, I presume this is what they call faith healing, yeah. right? Where they gather in huge groups, right? There's a huge congregation of uh, believers who come together and there is this uh, one or maybe even a few who are on stage and they do their prayers at, at an amazing rate for a very, very long time. And you can imagine with so much prayers, there's a lot of divine energy that comes down. And the main uh, and, uh, the, and the main person who's on stage is the one who receives and his antakarna or his spiritual cord can become really, really big. And because of that divine channel that he is, that energy that pours down through him, when people who are sick come onto the stage and he touches them, that divine energy, since it has a consciousness of its own, it will go all through the body, healing that patient. And so that became very, very famous and still is, right? And so, except of course, COVID-19, but otherwise they actually come in big groups 
to say prayers through the day, sometimes mm -hmm. three, four days. And it's only on the last day that patients or people in the congregation that are unwell are asked to come on stage. And yes, in many cases, there are miraculous healings. Again, they know what to do, but you ask them how it works, they don't know. The technique is never revealed. Yes, and for me, that's why I, I truly appreciate Master Cho's teachings. Yes, and so they continue to say that they have, um, they come up with this healing in the various Christian churches. Uh, little doubt that such methods, while far from being wholly physical, yet do work to some extent through, again, the etheric matter. So though it looks like they're touching the physical body, the divine energy actually moves first through the energy body before it hits the physical body and heals the physical body. No. Huh? What do you want me to say about I it? I don't know. Anything you want to say? Well, faith healing. <laughs> Use of divine energy. Faith healing. Not master faith healing. Yeah. This is just See, faith, faith, healing. faith healing is good, but it's also important to know what energy is uh, and the principle of conductivity. Uh, because if you have faith, if you just have faith and no energy, what are you going to conduct? So that's why uh, whenever we teach pranic healing, divine healing is on the second day. First, we do the other healings so that it's not just because if we just teach divine healing, everyone will just do divine healing all the time. So, and it won't give them the proper understanding of how energy works and how healing is done. Uh, energy healing is done. So, that's why we do it. In their case, they don't know about someone said about fainting, falling down because they don't know about uh, cleansing. Uh, yeah, about cleansing and over energizing. That's why they, they fall. All right. Yeah. Okay. So the possibility of utilizing our knowledge for etheric phenomena extends beyond what, what, what is already explained above, yeah? It thus seems that uh, probable than, than an important and hetero, almost unrecognizable factor in the treatment of disease and the prevention of health would derive from the etheric, apart from the purely physical properties of drugs, water, gases, air, emanations of soil, mineral, fruit, flower, and trees. It is possible in the future that we may discover health resorts. <laughs> I think this already started to an extent. Either on land, yes, lakes or seas, which depend for their curative powers on their etheric properties. Yes, so basically to find pieces of land, water, where the etheric energy is so amazing that when you go there, your literally your etheric body gets cleaned completely. And when that gets clean, balanced, and becomes healthy, obviously the physical body will become clean, healthy, and balanced. Right? And so that's why, remember, they were talking about uh, the prana uh, or the vibrations in different parts. Like the top of a mountain will be different from a waterfall to the beach side to a forest. But they all will start to kind of literally change your vibration when you go there. Yes. So if you're if you're lucky and you have all of that in your country, you should take time to go to a beach sometime, go into the woods or the forest at some point, go to the mountain top at some point and to the waterfalls. Yes. So when you do this, the energies that are emitted from them are so different that it's like I remember they mentioned it's like going to the gym and working out muscles that you didn't. Or, for example, you're someone who only walks and runs. Right. And one day you decide to do yoga. <laughs> And you realize there are muscles you never knew existed and they're so stiff, right? The same thing if you're doing uh, only yoga or probably something else and not Pilates and suddenly you realize, oh my God, there's another set of muscles that I haven't been using. Yes. And uh, similarly here, this, these pranas can be further useful in healing you. <coughs> Anything to add on it? No. <coughs> Excuse me. Please. So... Um, the attention which has recently been devoted to the wider use of sunlight obviously has a close bearing on what we know concerning the emanations of prana from the sun, its diffusion in the atmosphere, and its absorption by living brains. Basically, solar prana. Right. You know, that's when I think people started off with sunbathing. Because if you look at 100 years ago, there was no sunbathing. Because you can't show any skin you like show, that. Yes, you couldn't show skin. <laughs> skin. But then with the revelation that the sun and the prana from the sun is so healthy for you, you, I mean, you find people everywhere, except for us, uh, in, especially here in Southeast Asia, we do not want to go out to the sun and get sunbathed. We don't need to we bathe in the sun. We get enough of it uh, throughout the year. So, But sadly, we have the issue with uh, vitamin D deficiency, though we come from the place which is... What they're talking about here is still not completely done. It would be nice if it's done. 
you know, healing by the five elements. So you have water, you have earth, you have prana, fire. you have fire, not burning you, but using fire to cleanse. What's that? Fire, water. Air. So, air. Yeah, prana. <laughs> um, so pranic energy. So oh. earth, water, fire. And then you have the yeah. fifth element, which is uh, Mila Jovovich. Uh, just a joke. It's not Mila Jovovich. It's... All right. Prana. Moving on. <laughs> it's... <laughs> it may be that further knowledge of etheric and vital phenomena may lead to a profound change of attitude towards use in medicine and dietetics of substances which have passed through or are derived from animal organisms. Yes. And so you find that um, there is in cheese, you have things from animals. <laughs> the cheese itself comes from an animal. Uh, you have eggs that some of us have to consume. Uh, there are certain things that gelatin, for example, uh, we'll have to be careful about some of these products because it does come from different animals. But if you know pranic healing or you know how to use um, healing of the etheric energy of that particular uh, product that also has maybe parts or, or things from, um, from animals, could then be cleansed and purified so that when you take it, it doesn't cause a problem. The reason being, you've got to remember that the, the, uh, you're the human race, right? You're up here, and this is what you call the animal kingdom. So the human race is supposed to be more evolved than the animal kingdom. And so the vibration of the animals in conjunction with who you and I are and our vibrations may not be in sync. Not for all, yeah, but there, there could be cases that it's not really good for you. But if you have to take it and there's no choice, then you'll have to consume it. And if you have to consume it, what do you do? So I remember I was coming from, I'm not too sure, this is a long time ago from Egypt, right? And uh, we were landing in Mumbai and I had to go straight for a meeting. Uh, we had an ashram meeting. And at that point, on the flight, it was a night flight, and I went off to sleep. And when I woke up, uh, I realized they'd already served food for everyone, and there was no choice but to eat non-veg at that point. And I realized I had to eat because I had to go straight for this meeting. And after the meeting, only in the evening, would I be traveling back to Bangalore, right? So there was gonna be a whole day of meeting. Maybe I could get something to eat, but it's gonna be a long while. And so, uh, considering that the last meal was probably lunch, <laughs> I haven't had dinner, I realized I needed to eat. And I remember in walking to everyone, including the teacher saying, please clean this because this is the only food that I can get, right? And so I had to eat it. And sometimes on these flights, which are not, for example, for me, Indian sectors, the amount of vegetarian food that's on the flight is very, very limited. And literally it's a special meal, right? And so uh, since I had uh, missed my chance, I had to eat. And that time the only thing that, could, that I could do is literally clean out the food properly um, do other techniques that we also know uh, with, with our uh, meditation and then consume it. Yeah, so there can be times that you are going to be in a situation where there's nothing to eat but certain things and then if you have to consume it, what would you do? Yeah, we're very lucky that this, this was done and I was able to consume it. Uh, did not expect to sleep, but I, I guess the body was very tired and I, I went to sleep at that point. We need special means because we're special. <laughs> yes, and today you have all kinds of things, vegan, gluten-free, all kinds of things besides uh, our vegetarian meals. <laughs> okay, so where are we? Raf it Rafka is asking, is that why it's hard to take B12 tablets? It gives pain to stomach. I have no idea. B12? Not I no really. I, 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 I do consume B12. I don't have a problem. Uh, so I should clean all my medication before I take it, even if it's just pure vitamins that I'm taking. Yeah, vitamin C, uh, vitamin D. Uh, the B12. So clean out the medication properly and then consume it. Cleanse, energize it. So if you don't know what to do, pray, ask God to clean it out of all the side effects and then energize that the therapeutic value of the medication is enhanced before you consume it. That's it. That's as simple as it is. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it is... No. Did I finish this? No. Oh, here we come. Vitamins. Uh, it is a reasonable conjecture... Con conjecture? Ah, okay. That those elusive substances known as vitamins may owe their beneficent properties to the presence in them in one form or the other of prana. 
right? So uh, when I read this, I was thinking, I was like, oh, wow, you know, recently the doctor was saying, keeping COVID in mind, maybe it's good for you to consume a little extra vitamins and uh, minerals. And so this is basically what it is, you know, cleanse it, energize it, give it more prana, uh, or possibly to the quality of the etheric matter they contain. So in this case, if you can clean and uh, whatever medication, whether it's your child's medication, whether it's something very simple like homeopathy medication that you want to take on a regular basis for your health, just clean it out and energize it. Makes that medication literally stronger for you. Yeah. So if you're not doing it, you may start. Amit, can you read? I've been reading the whole time. Okay. But you always read. I read it. Like, I also. know, but you're not saying anything in between. You, you didn't ask me this now. Okay, talk on it. You know, I don't know whether he's against this. Maybe he's for, uh, uh, you know, it says it may, it may be that the further knowledge of etheric and vital phenomena may lead to a profound, profound change of attitude towards the use of medicine and dietetics or substance which has passed through or are derived from animal oil. Maybe it's a good thing, he's saying, because it has their energy. You mean that kind of animal thing is required for the body? Yeah, maybe. You don't know. The presuming Wrong. maybe maybe not for no, that's people, my understanding okay. so it's purely the way i think of it it depends i mean uh, it is definitely beneficial to consume certain of those things they definitely will have more energy yeah for example there's cod liver oil right now the cod liver oil obviously comes from the fish the cod but um You're talking so again Okay, it's a reasonable conjecture. <laughs> okay, vitamins here. Uh, recognition of the fact that the vitality of the body is deprived, derived not from food, but direct from the atmosphere may well lead to a radical change in the dietetic treatment of six persons and also to a much greater use of fasting as a curative agency. Those who are familiar with the literature of fasting will no doubt be aware that several writers in this interesting subject have already deduced from actual observation that the connection between assimilation of food and the acquirement of vital energy is very far from being simple or direct. What? I agree. Well, <laughs> I don't agree to the fact <laughs> that it's not derived from food. Obviously, prana is derived from food. It is also derived from the air. It is also derived from water it is also derived from the earth and is also derived from other people <laughs> right Correct. so so basically thanks to master Cho, we know that yeah so um so it's not that it's not derived from food it's definitely derived from food but uh but at the same time you can absorb a significant much more portion of it because you know with food you have to eat it to absorb it and how much food can you eat right uh, so, but with prana, you can absorb with breathing. So you can absorb more and more if you need more, right? So with food, you, you can eat only a certain amount of food and most of that might not be prana. It's similar to taking protein supplements instead of having, you know, four chicken breasts, you have one scoop of protein supplement or protein isolate, something, whey protein, something like that. Um, so what is, you, you don't give up the chicken breast or okay sorry vegetarians if you're having paneer or whatever that is uh, uh, uh you can have both and but it's good to know that there are these options and fasting as a curative agency is not because that you absorb prana it's not my specialization i have no idea about those guys who keep fasting um and not that's eat. what i agree I, I don't relate to them um <laughs> i think they're doing it just to show that the importance of prana but obviously it's not uh, something that is recommended uh, but what fasting does is if you look at it there are different reasons why fasting is curative but one of the main reasons is um, if you look at it your bones uh, your heart uh, your, especially your organs like your intestines or intestines your stomach your uh, esophagus your liver. liver your kidneys they've all been working non-stop day after day, month after month, year after year. So the thing with, the, 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 uh, what happens with fasting is you, you start to give these uh, organs a break, you know, because sometimes we are eating much more and more often than we ever did before. There's no, lockdown. you see with Swiggy <laughs> and Zomatro, like I don't think there's a break for these organs at any point of time. They're always digesting <laughs> something, right? We just throw a biscuit in our mouth, we walk here, throw something else, we chew on gum, I mean, these things did not exist before. And I don't know if our body is equipped to handle non-stop work all the time, except when, they're asleep, when the body's asleep. And even then, you might eat and sleep, like, and depending what you eat, right? Uh, 
So when you, when you fast for a whole day, you're giving the body to, first of all, catch up with maybe excess work and also give them a rest uh, and so that they can rebuild themselves, recharge, re-energize so that they are functional at optimum levels. Yeah. Now, some people, when they fast, they drink an obscene amount of water and fluids. Now, that defeats the purpose because then the point is to give the body a rest. And now you're overworking your kidneys and other organs to process all of this uh, fluid. So um, it should be just enough, but not, you know, the point of fasting is to give the body a break. That's what Master Joe would recommend. He says, don't overdo it now by drinking, you know, too much. Uh, if you want to go on a liquid diet, that's different. But don't uh, if you're say fasting, you're fasting. Sorry, you're yeah. break, yeah. Don't say you're fasting and then consuming more than you did before. The water intake should be just the normal. Some people go without even water. Their fast is no food, no water. Now that's that's different as well. Um, not a problem. And like Stapa said, it's also a means of having willpower, and also to tell the body, listen, I'm the boss. Yeah, you will get food only when I tell you and how much I give you. So uh, that's that's another thing about uh, the system. Now, the lungs and the uh, heart has to continue because when they stop, then we stop, right? So those two don't stop, <laughs> thank God. Uh, so there is, their working continues. But the time that the heart rests, right, is between two heartbeats. So when you're not stressed, when you relax the body, that's when the heart also gets to kind of relax and calm itself down. Yep. Remember in, uh, in, in a relaxed mode, the, the blood that is entering your heart uh, or even your lungs takes about, uh, takes about maybe 10 minutes to come back if you're relaxed. But if you're in hyper mode, right, working, uh, then it takes about a minute for it to come back. Yeah, that's what I remember. Continue. Dr. Sagar, I hope I'm right. No, he's here. Okay. So where did you start from? Uh, the fasting, vital energy. Okay, fine. It is now generally recognized that the use of electricity for curative purposes has not fulfilled all that and at, uh, that was at first hoped for. So basically we're talking about how electricity was used as a curative means. The only place I remember seeing it is, you know, in these movies when they talk about someone in, in, in a psychological imbalance state who go there and get electric. That's the only time I know electricity was used for curative purposes. Now, in the old days, 100 years ago, was it used for others? I'm not sure. How are they saying since the results were not very great? They're saying hopefully with deeper knowledge and understanding of the etheric uh, system, the etheric phenomena, they could probably use this assisted or uh, go together with electricity and then come up with maybe new curative, better curative purposes. Yes, the association of electricity with the etheric matter of which the etheric double is composed is a phenomena which may thus, uh, thus be turned to valuable account. So basically, if they can figure out a better way, then maybe they could use electricity along with the etheric body. Yeah, I will stop there. Uh, we're more or less at the end of the session, so I will give it to Amit. We'll have to meet you on Wednesday. That's it. I have anything to say. You know, I don't know what electricity they're talking about as curative purposes. I'll have to look into it. The only thing I know is uh, when you have, you know, to, to sometimes when healing of the bone is not happening and it's slow, they pass a mild electrical current to accelerate the healing. Um, that's what I've heard. Apart from that, I don't know where it is used. But yes, of course, that also helps. Combined with pranic healing, of course, that will help. I remember once when I went, there was this lady who put something on my hair, which had like little electric currents. I think it's to kind of help with the circulation of blood in the brain to help the roots of the hair. To yeah, in that, uh, as good as it gets, he had that device that, yeah, as a movie oh. with uh, yeah, Jack Nicholson. He had yeah. that electric. So there are, there are different things that they did in the past, but I'm not very well aware of it. I'm just thinking of something in the, in the present. Yeah, so with that, I think we will... Rhythmic fasting helps. I have no idea. Eat only when hungry. That would be a problem for my body because my... <laughs> it's not his style. It's not his style. On, this, think, on the yeah. satiety center <laughs> and the stomach of... Uh, my stomach might not be um, that normal. <laughs> Yeah, she says uh, ultraviolet rays also used for orthopedics. Yeah, so so. Yeah, so that'll assist. 
Okay, so um, that's basically it. Fasting, one of the things that Master Chow mentioned was once a week is good enough. Yeah. And uh, it, it actually, like he says, gives a, the body a break and also helps. Now, this is for Arhatic Yogis, yeah? And I'm not talking about people in general, but that's what he mentioned. Mm. So if you want to fast, and I remember we were trying to figure out which day, and we said, Master, we do it on, you know, Thursday. It's got to do with the Guru. He says, no, please. Then when you're fasting, you'll be cursing me. Don't do that. Don't put it on my day. Do it any other day. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, that's basically with fasting and what we've done so far. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll meet you for the last session on Wednesday. Uh, it might be a shorter session maybe. I'm not too sure. If it's a shorter session, 6.30 to maybe 7, 7.15. Uh, so you might have time to be with your family. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Let's end with a short prayer. To the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Grand Master Chok, Oxvilad Maha Guruji Mele. To all the great ones, to all the invisible and spiritual helpers, the great beings of knowledge, light, and power, to the great teachers of education, to the Lord Christ, to great beings, our masters and teachers of theosophy, to the angels and beings of our communication systems, to our soul and divine self, we thank you all for your great, great blessings, for your tremendous patience with us. Thank you for helping us understand these priceless teachings, help us to continue to assimilate it and become better instruments to do your will and to make this world a better place with thanks and in full faith so be it thank you Akma Namaste everybody thank you for being with us and see you Wednesday third book Take study care. I doubt it maybe she can do it <laughs> what third book study no I think I'm going to take a break this is my second book and uh, oh, the first one is so small though yeah, it was, but I started with that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is with the textbook of Theosophy, one of the things I'm trying to do is because it's not too big and not too many uh, sessions, I'm going to most probably put it on my Facebook page, Sumi Lazadar, right? S-U-M-I-L-A-Z-A-R-D-H-A-R. <laughs> yes, I'm going to place it there. So if you want to, I'm going to figure out how to do that and put it there so you can watch it. But this one, which is much longer and bigger, I'll have to figure out where to place it. Yeah. We'll do a... I'll do a director's commentary on the textbook of Theosophy with her. And here, while Sumi is talking, what she's actually also thinking <laughs> is that another way that you can look at it is... Yeah, sure. You know, well. You don't have director commentaries anymore, right? Because there are no DVDs anymore. Sad. Yeah, but there are so many of those amazing things in those. Anyway, thank you so much, Behind people. the scenes. And behind stuff like the that. scenes. Yeah, behind the scenes, nothing much. This is this behind the scenes. Behind the scenes. Like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and our little one coming there and saying, time to eat. That's yeah. about the behind the scenes here. All right. And when are we going back to Dubai? <laughs> All right, Miss people. Man. Enjoy. Bon appetit. Take care. Oh, yeah, we were still talking. Well, oh, yeah. Then. Stop the live stream. <laughs> okay, people. Enjoy. See you. Bye.